Welcome everyone, it's Dr. Solomon And it's Dr. Solomon here. We're going to talk about something really important. Aftercare, after hair transplant. Because even though we give people aftercare, <laughs> they still ask ourselves. Yeah, yeah, and so that's absolutely fine. Okay, fine. I think you're going to split it up into different days. Yes. That's what we're going to do. Yeah. So I think for the first five days, it's really important that you look after your grass correctly. So that means shampooing the area three times daily. Um, there's separate videos on how we talk about shampooing and also spraying every hour with your saline or growth factor solution um, every hour for the first 72 hours until, or until it finishes, okay? Those are the two most important things that you need to do. Secondly is avoidance of certain activities. So no exercise, weightlifting, high octane exercise for at least two weeks, okay? And people say, when can I do this? When can I do this? Well, when your scabs come off, that normally is a time when you can start doing some light activity, okay? But as soon as, while, while the scabs are in, you need to take it easy. So all that exercise and things that you do, hit training, all that sort of stuff, you cannot do that within the first two week period. And the purpose of that is because we don't want to increase the pressure in the, in the uh, cranial area. Absolutely uh, not. We don't want the increase of blood flow to disturb the graft or to rattle the graft. We want the graft to set in and to be very firm in their placing. Yeah, and also for the first 72 hours, no excessive leaning forward, yeah. especially when you're putting your shoes on, you need to be bringing your leg towards you rather than you going down so yeah. because that pressure, especially within the first few hours, is really bad. Also, one of the most immediate things that I've seen go wrong, unfortunately, two times in my career, is people going in the taxi afterwards and hitting their head because your head is numb. It's like a football, you know? Um, and you don't, you lose that visual spatial awareness temporarily because of the local anesthetic and people hit their head. So you need to be really careful with the head. The other thing is, think about not wearing a baseball cap because when I had my head transplant, I wore a baseball cap, I walked outside on the road, a gust of wind came, pulled my cap off, as well as three or four graphs over here. And I've regretted that ever since. Yeah. So if you can get away without wearing a cap, then, then don't wear a cap. And it is a vanity issue. I mean, the reason you would wear a cap after a head transplant is to cover up the grafts. But yeah. I think the risk versus the benefit of that, uh, the risk outweigh the benefit. Uh, certainly is your experience and we've we've had countless patients who've talked about wearing a hat in fact sometimes the hat sticks onto the grafts and then as you take the hat off off the grafts go and remember in the first 72 hours they are vulnerable you can take not just the hair but you can take the graft after 72 hours it's absolutely fine to do so but it our advice would be not to wear a hat definitely you know if you can avoid something why not but if you want to wear a hat you want to wear a scarf make sure that they're brand new clean sterile and These very really loose to prevent infection it's really important we give post-operative antibiotics, so make sure always you take your antibiotics to prevent infection, also reduce inflammation. One of the most important things that I like to say to people is that when you're gonna be shampooing three times a day and you're spraying, at the same time, it's really important to ice the area as well. So you take your ice pack, you do five minutes here, five minutes there, five minutes there. That's 15 minutes in total. And that means, and you do that three to four times daily, that will help prevent some of the swelling that's occurring. Sometimes post-operatively, we also give some steroids to patients as well, oral steroids, which also calm down things as well. But don't forget in the surgery, we inject some steroids as well. That really helps with the swelling. So you shouldn't have terrible swelling. But look, swelling is a normal part of recovery. That's what you need to remember. Yeah. So how do we prevent infection after hair transplant? Well, you're preventing infection because obviously you're going to be shampooing the hair three times daily. You're not going to be putting anything covering over that hair as well and you're allowing it to air dry. You don't want to keep it moist, moist, moist all the time. And also you want to be taking your antibiotics and also in the procedure we're strictly sterile as well, which is, you know, I think super important. Some of the questions that we've got from our social media is when can you swim after surgery? What would you recommend in terms of swimming? I would recommend a minimum of two weeks after surgery. The reason being, whilst the grafts are quite firmly planted after 72 hours, uh, the scabs can remain for up to two weeks. And those yeah. scabs, you don't want to disturb them. You don't want them to get irritated by the chlorinated or even sometimes salt water. Yeah. And by, by the irritation after, for example, swimming during swimming, 
um, there is a risk of that area becoming, the skin becoming irritated, leading to you scratching or um, abrasing yeah. the area, and as a result of that, potentially causing a post-operative infection. Um, in the first 72 hours, it's critical that that area isn't touched at all. Um, no chlorinated water other than the shampooing and the sort of shower water, and that is, again, to protect the graft and to protect the scabs. Yeah, and you know, at the end of the day, a lot of people give like magical like shampoo formulas and stuff. Like, you know, I just recommend baby shampoo for the first two weeks. After two weeks, you want to use something that's a bit more exfoliating, so you split, switch back to your normal shampooing routine. You can start using uh, things like minoxidil uh, if you're using it after f um, five days uh, with no problem. And you should really shouldn't stay off the minoxidil for a long period of time because you can get shedding. One instance where you should be wearing a hat is if you're going into direct sunlight and you've got to wear that for at least six weeks and cover that area. So that means if you're going in direct sun or you're going on holiday afterwards, you've got to be su super cautious. That's the only time when I say wear the hat is certainly if you're going to go straight to a hot country after two, in, within that two week period or you're living in a hot country. Um, and definitely after two weeks spraying sun cream over that area to make sure you don't burn the area because you can get a lot of prolonged redness as well with that. Yeah. So that's the short-term aftercare. Let's talk about the medium to long-term aftercare within the first year, something we've both been through as well. Uh, what is the most important measure you can take to um, protect the new hairs that have been implanted and also preserve the existing hairs? Yeah, so don't do anything silly. No head injuries, that's one important thing. Um, certainly making sure that you stay away from the sun and make sure you don't get sunburned, especially if the hair is shaved short. Um, thirdly is also taking things to prevent ongoing hair loss, so topical minoxidil, inpatient PRP or um, stem cell therapy or exosome therapy within the clinic, um, and also um, taking daily uh, Propecia. Um, which, which is you know, the anti-testosterone medication. Anti-testosterone, if you don't want to take that due to certain things, then there's the other things that I aforementioned things that are actually appropriate. Um, and then also, like we said, is that not interfering so much with the growth of the hair. So, you know, I, I, people always try and maybe sometimes do much, but you know what, with hair transplants, it's just time. You will not notice anything within like first three, four months, you'll be really unhappy. But by month five, six, seven, suddenly you'll get exponential growth and you'll be a lot happier with it. One thing that you sometimes get, even at like sort of two weeks, um, as well as when at three, four months when the hair starts growing again, is little pimples and bumps underneath the skin. And what I normally say, which is really, really useful, is you buy these heat packs, you can buy it from like Amazon and stuff, the things that you put in the microwave, and you just put it on the area for 10 to 15 minutes, and just as it just eases the hair growth through, uh, it only lasts, that, that period only tends to last a couple of weeks, but if you use those heat, heat packs two or three times a day, they quickly resolve quite nicely, and it prevents kind of cysts and things happening. If a cyst gets a little bit bigger, it's not a big deal, it doesn't affect your result, you just need to come in, you need to have a little lance within the area, absolutely fine. Thank you so much. If you want to know anything more about aftercare or anything about hair transplants in, in particular, just let us know in the comments below. If you're interested in everything hair or even skin, we talk about everything. So don't forget to click subscribe. That's the most important thing. So you don't miss out on any new content or any new videos that we're going to be putting up.